Hello, this is Blaine McCormick at the Hand Camera School of Business at Baylor University, and welcome to How to Be a Marketing Ninja. Uh, this is a series of videos I'm doing on uh, mastering the decision sheets in the Foundation Business Simulation. This one focuses on marketing, and it focuses on your marketing decisions. How can you make the best decisions uh, round to round? Uh, can you make a better set of decisions in round two than you made in round one? That's kind of the goal of this series. And so your marketing decision sheet looks like this. There's some graphs down here at the bottom that we're not showing, but uh, the places where you make decisions are always green on the foundation decision sheet. So you have to make a price and pick a promo and sales budget and pick a forecast. and. Uh, you can uh, adjust your accounts receivable and accounts payable policy on your marketing sheet. We don't do that often, but I'll explain that in a moment. And then there's some calculations on this side. And so uh, we're going to start over here on this side, and then we'll show you these calculations here and what you do with these boxes and those graphs. Uh, but first, let's kind of put all this in a context for marketing decisions. And let's start with market share. Uh, in uh, an average perfect world, uh, all six teams would get one-sixth of the market share. If it was perfectly competitive, um, everybody would get one-sixth. And this is a perfectly competitive graph here. Uh, but we can go over here and see that, you know, uh, this is not a perfectly competitive world. This is a world where Team Ferris got one-fourth of the market share, uh, which is well above average. And Team Andrews got almost one-fifth of the market share, which is well above average. And what did they do to do this? Um, I think they were market ninjas. Uh, they, they understand how to uh, capture more of the demand that's in the marketplace. And that comes as a result of making better decisions. And speaking of demand, uh, one thing you need to understand through your conditions report and the situation analysis is that uh, usually, not always, uh, there are scenarios where this doesn't happen, but in most uh, scenarios, demand grows across the course of the eight rounds in the simulation. And so uh, you, there's a demand of about two million units uh, here in round one. And in round eight, this one's almost reaching eight million units. And so, you know, demand uh, increases fourfold. And you need to understand that as you're building your products, how can you capture uh, more and more of a growing market? And so that's kind of an important concept as we move in. Let's start on the left-hand side of the decision sheet here. Uh, this uh, part of the decision sheet, I like to say, uh, captures the four P's of marketing really well. And those four P's are your products. And so you start with one product. It's able for this company and you can create uh, four more in foundation. And then you're asked to set a price. That's the second of the four P's of marketing. And then you're asked to, you know, manage your promotion budget uh, because uh, you, that's another one of the P's of marketing. And then you're asked to manage your sales budget, which determines how many places uh, or channels that your product's in. The, the more uh, you spend on sales, the more places uh, or channels that your product uh, gets into. And uh, managing these four P's here and making decisions on them uh, can grow demand uh, pretty significantly for you uh, as well. And we like to say, let's just start with each of those P's. Uh, let's just take products, for example. We like to say in our class that uh, new products equals new revenue. And so this is a uh, company, Erie. And so all their products start with E, but they started with uh, product EAT. And you can see they kept that product across all eight rounds. But it, it started off well, but it kind of declined as they went across. And so they're not making as much, but they created uh, product email in the second round. And in round uh, three, they had product EAST come on. And in round uh, uh, four, they had uh, product EPIC come on. And then in round six, they had product EARL come on. Uh, and, you know, Earl did really well for him, and you can see that the, uh, the revenue for each product kind of stacks on each other. And so if you want to uh, get more and more of a growing market, uh, creating products is one way to do that. And they had over $200 million in revenue uh, because of this. If they only had two products, for example, uh, they might make it over $100,000 if they grew those products. But it's just harder to reach, uh, you know, the bigger revenue segments without more products. And so that's how uh, the product P helps you grow that. And so if you have the right products uh, and the right number of them at the right price, uh, with a good promotion budget in as many places as you can, you'll maximize your demand. That's the four P's of marketing. And then you've got your accounts receivable policy here that you can play with. That's this top one. And uh, accounts receivable is your credit policies. And let's say if you extend more credit, 
you make this 90 days and give more credit, your customers are going to love it because they don't have to pay you for 90 days instead of paying you at 30 days. And so this is going to increase demand uh, for your products a little bit. This is a dangerous way to increase demand because this has uh, cash flow implications. This has financial implications. But it is a trigger you can pull in a really competitive environment. And so I would recommend, you know, inching it up. Uh, don't go from 30 to 90 days. Go from 30 to 35 days or 30 to 40 days. You know, be very careful because it does have impacts on down the line. Let's look at the right-hand side of your decision sheet. Um, again, uh, your sales forecast is here. It's one of the most important decisions that you make um, each round. But if you, uh, this, this calculation uses the computer uh, forecast, but if we take our price that you set and multiply it by the expected forecast, which is the computer one here, you'll have a revenue forecast, and forecast is the operative word. This isn't actuals, this is just forecast. But if we priced it $34, and we think we'll sell a uh, million three hundred thirty-four thousand units, uh, you'll see here that the gross revenue forecast is forty-five million three hundred sixty-one thousand dollars, and that just gives us an estimate. Uh, this gives us some numbers to watch as we make our decisions. If we take our revenue forecast and we subtract our variable cost, which will be explained on the production uh, decision sheet, we get our margin, and so we can see that we have about uh, nine million dollars uh, and some change in margin left over, and that shows in this column here. That's our forecast for our margin, and then if we subtract our sales and promo budget, which we had a million dollars uh, in our sales and promo budget, if you look on that uh, previous slide, there, uh, so we had. 9 million and some change in margin. We subtract our promo and sales budget. We kind of have an earnings estimate um, uh, of what this product will bring to us. Now, this isn't our profit estimate because we still have to pay interest and taxes and things like that, but it does give us some sense of how much this product is going to give us here. That, uh, all those numbers are reflected in this graph that's on the lower left hand side of the decision sheet, and you see your variable costs are here in this color your marketing costs are here in this color and then uh, that mar far right column your margin after marketing is this green one here that's that seven million dollars uh, which is roughly equivalent there uh, and you'll see your product stack here across the way I want to recommend that it looks more like this let's say you invent product awesome uh, what we want to do is minimize our variable cost and you do that on your production page and then uh, you know manage your marketing costs appropriately and you want a graph that has lots of green here so as you stack your products across the way you know the more green the better that's going to give you a, a good looking bottom line there there's another graph on the lower right hand side of the page here and that's your unit sales forecast by segment and you'll see the product you inherit able here it's selling uh, most of them in low tech but it's selling no small amount in high tech here and that's because Able kind of straddles both segments there. Uh, that's not a strategy I recommend personally. Is, as you invent your products here, uh, I would suggest that you uh, commit them to one segment or the other. You want graphs that look more, you know, one-sided here. For example, A low is going to sell a lot more in low tech than high tech, although it'll always sell a little bit in high tech usually. Uh, and A high is going to be a high tech product that sells mostly in high tech. Now have a little bit of low tech there. So you really want your graphs to look more like this and you certainly don't want them to look 50-50 uh, because if you do that it's really going to uh, be hard to sell that product in both segments there. If you're playing with the balance scorecard your decisions will impact your balance scorecard and we'll just run through that real quickly. What you want to do is improve your customer satisfaction as much as possible to get all five points. This is going to be a tug of war between you and your customers. If you get all five, it's probably because your price is too low and your reliability is too high and you know it's going to hurt you financially and production wise and things like that. So I don't know if you'll ever get all five, but um, you can increase awareness and get five for five on awareness. You can increase uh, your accessibility with your sales budget um, and uh, get five for five on your accessibility. Uh, you can invent new products and improve your product count and get five points there. As you go and if you manage your SGNA correctly, you can get all five points there. And so, you know, these are pretty easy points to get down here. This one's going to be tougher. So, uh, you know, as you come down here, you'll have, you ought to be well above 20 points. And you can push it close to 25, but I don't know if you can ever get all 25 points because, again, if you do that, you're really going to be hurting, your, you're going to be uh, underpricing your product and really hurting your financials and things like that on there. So that's how your decisions impact your balance scorecard. So to be a marketing ninja, you know, what you want to do 
is get uh, more than your fair share and as you play uh, you will create a uh, environment that's not perfectly competitive but you'll be getting uh, you know a larger segment of that market share if you make good decisions uh, round to round and I hope this video helps you do that uh, good luck as you make your decisions thanks for tuning in